guys, it's Yay for Yarn, and this is a video tutorial for the Rainbow Ridge Afghan Crochet Pattern. This free crochet pattern is available as a written pattern. If you go down to the description box and click the link to my blog, you will find the written pattern available for free. So let's get started. This is what the finished afghan is going to look like. This is a smaller swatch of my color choices and my stripe pattern that I'm going to be using. I'm using an eye hook for this pattern, 5.5 millimeter. And you will also need um, a little pair of scissors to cut the yarn at the end of each stripe. The gauge for this pattern is that one chevron from valley to peak to the next valley should measure three and a half inches wide and four rows in the back loop only should measure two inches tall. Now the difference between this chevron afghan and the regular chevron afghans is that this is worked in the back loop only so you get a lot more texture and the stripes are more defined with the, the little ridges along the tops of the rows. And another thing that you want to make sure of is that your colors when you lay them out before you start working your colors are in an order that looks pleasing to your eye and your taste and also colors that like each color is in an order that it goes together with what's on each side of it. So for example, I chose not to have yellow next to green. That's just my taste. Because I prefer to have it more spread out and I didn't want the two purples next to each other. So I also picked my colors and ordered my amounts of yarn my different numbers of balls that I needed according to which were my favorite because there are three rows in this stripe this stripe and this stripe whereas there are only two rows in this stripe this stripe and this stripe and my favorites out of all these colors were the green the pink and the teal so I chose to use those as my colors that had three stripes instead of two. So I needed more of those colors than of the others. To start out, I'm going to make a slip knot and place it on my hook. Um, you want to leave at least a six inch tail. This is my, what I'm going to call color A. And with color A, I'm going to chain 178 stitches loosely. Now, if you have a hard time chaining loosely, you might want to make your foundation chain with a larger hook than what you're going to be using for the rest of the pattern. So I'm going to chain 178 and then we'll start working the first row. All right, now I've chained 178 stitches and I'm going to work row one. Now, all the rows are going to start with a beginning double crochet two together. And normally, when you start a row of plain double crochet, you would chain three, and that would count as your first double crochet to get up to the right height so that you could keep working the rest of them. A beginning double crochet two together does the same thing, but we are working two stitches together. So we have to start with your hook at, the, at a high enough position so that you can work the rest of the decrease. Now, these first two chains right here are going to count as part of our beginning double crochet two together. So to make a beginning to double crochet two together, since we're working under our foundation chain, all you need to do is skip the first two and work a double crochet in the third chain. Now, what this does is the beginning chain two right here, the two chains that we skipped, 
would normally count as one stitch, but since they're not that tall, since they're not tall enough to be one stitch, this creates the same shape as a double crochet two together. So this counts as one stitch, the chain two and the double crochet. So now I'm going to work a double crochet in the next six stitches. Okay, now I'm going to work three double crochets in the next stitch. Now I'm going to work a double crochet in the next six stitches. Now I'm going to work a double crochet three together. You're going to yarn over, insert your hook into the next stitch, yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two. Yarn over, insert your hook into the next stitch, yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two. Yarn over, insert your hook into the next stitch, yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two loops. Now since I have four loops on my hook, I have three partial double crochets attached to those last three loops. I'm going to yarn over and pull through all four loops on my hook and that creates a double crochet three together. Now I'm going to repeat from the asterisk if you're reading the, the written pattern, but I'm going to repeat from just after the beginning double crochet two together, which is double crochet in the next stitch, in the next six, three double crochet in the next, double crochet in the next six, and double crochet three together. You're going to repeat that sequence nine more times. All right, now that I have repeated that same sequence nine times, I'm going to double crochet in the next six. Put three double crochet in the next stitch. And then I'm going to double crochet in the next six again. And I'm going to work a double crochet two together in these last two chains. And that's the end of row one. And as you can see, we've already started to get some of that chevron shape going along this first row. Now I'm going to turn and work row two. To work row two, I'm going to start with a beginning double crochet two together, which is chain two, double crochet in the back loop only of the next stitch. So we're not counting that chain two as a stitch, we're only counting the double crochet, and that counts as a double crochet two together. And then again, I'm going to double crochet in the back loop only of the next six. And by the way, back loop only, is, as you can see right here, there are two loops to the top of each stitch, we're going in the back one, the one that is facing away from me. Okay, now I'm gonna put three double crochet in the back loop only of the next stitch. Double crochet in the back loop only of the next six.
and double crochet three together in the back loop only. Okay, and you're going to repeat that sequence, not including the beginning double crochet two together. If you're using the written pattern off of my blog, then you will be able to um, know what that sequence is, but you can see on the written instructions, the asterisk, you're repeating between the, the first asterisk and the second one. And you're going to keep repeating that nine more times until you get pretty close to the end of the row. All right, now that I've repeated that sequence nine times, I'm going to double crochet in the back loop only of the next six stitches. Three double crochet in the back loop only of the next stitch. Double crochet in the back loop only of the next six. And then I'm going to work another double crochet two together in the back loop only. And this little chain two right here of the beginning double crochet two together from the row below does not count as a stitch, so I'm not working into that. For whatever stripe pattern that you choose, you're going to keep repeating row two over and over and over and over again until you decide to change colors. I'm going to repeat row two one more time because my first color is going to have three rows for its stripe. And then I'm going to change to the next color and work two rows. And when you are changing color to work into the next row, pretend I tied this off. You're going to have turned around and you're going to join the yarn in the back loop only of that double crochet two together. And then you're going to work row two again, however many times you decide to do until you want to change colors and make a different colored stripe. All right, now I have worked all of my rows and I've I made it as long as I want it to be. And now I'm going to work the final edging row. And I actually decided since um, my first edge that I started with, since Marina is my first color, this green right here, um, since that's the one I started with, I am also worked that at the end here too so that the edges match. And so I'm going to continue working with this color to make an edging across the top edge. So I have finished my last row and I'm going to turn my work. Now, get my yarn all untangled here. Um, since I've turned my work, I'm going to chain one and this final edging row is very simple. Um, throughout the whole afghan so far we've been working in the back loop only. For this row we're going to work into both loops. Now, um, this final row is going to be single crochet all the way across and um, some people count this first chain one that I've made here as a stitch and some people don't. I prefer to count it so instead of working into that same stitch that already has the chain coming out of it I'm going to work into the next one. Now if you're more familiar with not counting that as a stitch and you always count your first stitch as being the very first one whether it has a chain coming out of it or not then that's fine, but you just need to make sure you count when you count your final stitches that you don't include the chain. I'm going to include the chain in my stitch count, so I'm not going to work into this first um, stitch because it has the chain coming out of it. So this counts as the stitch that goes into this one. So I'm going to work a single crochet in both loops of every single stitch across the entire row. And this is going to be the edging for the top of my blanket. Okay, and now I have reached the place where we would normally put three stitches into one. We're not going to do that. We're just going to single crochet one time into that space and keep going all the way across. And as you can see, it lays flat. 
All right, now I have reached the end of my row and I have cut my yarn. So I'm just going to tie off. And I would also like to mention that there is a reason why we do not work decreases and increases in single crochet edging for this afghan. Because when you're working um, double crochet three together, it's a lot taller than a single crochet three together. So, since the single crochet three together is so much shorter, it's sharper. And the same with the increase. Three double crochets in one stitch is a much softer corner than three single crochets in one stitch. It makes a, a lot taller peak when you work in single crochet instead of double crochet. So that is why we only work plain single crochet here and not um, no decreases or increases in the peaks and valleys like we do with the double crochet because it keeps the edge from stretching and it kind of distorts it too. So I'm just going to weave in this tail and then we'll work an edging across the bottom. Alright, now I have flipped my afghan upside down and I'm going to work an edging across the bottom. And as you can see, the uh, foundation chain across the bottom edge tends to curl towards the front at the, uh, what's well, actually the valleys when it's right side up, but upside down, these are the peaks of the chevrons. So we're going to work an edging to try to straighten that out. And this is my um, starting tail. This is where I started my foundation chain. And I'm going to join my new yarn, it's the same color, in that stitch, that very first stitch. And I'm going to chain one. And I'm going to work upside down into the bottom of my foundation chain. All the way across, single crochet in every stitch across. And I'm also crocheting over my tails to keep from having to weave, in, weave them in later. And as you can see right here where the, the three double crochets go into one chain, there's a pretty big hole right there. And there are holes just like that in every um, stitch, and that's where we're working into. But the holes on the regular double crochets are just much smaller than the ones where there are three in one stitch. So I'm working into those holes that the double crochets go into. And you can see, once I stretch my tail so that it doesn't tighten the edge here, this lays mostly flat. So when I go to block this, then I will take, I like to take a pair of tweezers. These are crafting tweezers. They don't have sharp points, that's important. You don't want to puncture the yarn, you just want to poke it. And I will use this so that when I'm steam blocking and I, I'm using an iron or a steamer, so I don't get my hands in there trying to push it flat, I use these to hold the corners down on my chevrons so that they lay flat when I block them. So we're just going to keep single crocheting in this foundation chain all the way across to the end and tie off. Alright, I have worked to the end of my foundation chain and now I'm going to just cut my yarn, tie off, and weave in that last tail and block my afghan and that's all there is to it. That's it. All done.